Morning everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow, welcome if you just hopped on over from Facebook. So this morning I'm going to be answering a popular question that has recently been left on one of my older videos. So I'm going to be talking about the Concord and Ninth Turnabout Stamps, I'll be showing you what they are all about. There is another one released called Sprinkles that is somewhere on its way, I have ordered it so it should be here sometime over the weekend. And um, I'm going to be showing you how you use them with your Tim Holtz platform. So I showed you before how we use them in a Misty, and I'm going to show you uh, again how you use them in the Tim Holtz platform. Hopefully, in the top right of the screen right now, there will be a little card that comes up of how to use it in the Misty. So if you have the Misty, you can hop on over to that video and see how to use them. And this will be the Tim Holtz one. I'll also link that blog post with the download of my card and how to make your own that we'll get to in a minute. Uh, I will link that in the description below the video as well. So let's come on over to the craft space here. And I'm just going to use this new lovely mini tripod that seems to be working out really well. So you can see my work area. So here I have, uh, we'll need a Sharpie and a ruler. I have my Concord and Ninth Turnabout Stamps. I have three different shades of ink and I've chosen three very different shades of ink so that you can see what the turnabouts are all about. And this template. So this is the key template when we're using the turnabout stamps. And this is a piece of white cardstock that I put across uh, through like that. Hi Mandy, hi Rachel. And um, what I've done is put this cross through with a Sharpie. You also want to put arrows in a direction. Now whether you do it clockwise or anti-clockwise, it doesn't matter, but it just reminds you which way you are turning your stamp because trust me, you do forget when you start uh, working with it. And then I laminated it and made sure that I have a nice even lamination all the way around. Now there is a link blog post as I say, but the piece originally is six inches square and it's now just a smidgen over six and a quarter but my paper cutter has a little edge piece that you can use to cut against so that's why mine are not necessarily quite um, even but you can make it a quarter inch you can make it whatever works for you and your paper trimmer and of course we have our Tim Holtz platform now on the screen I will link up two videos hopefully top right these should come up it may be top left uh, but I will link up the video I did earlier in the week on using the foam in here and why I stamp on the rubber side, even my photopolymers. And I'll also link up the scrapbook.com video about taping up your magnets, Teflon mats, and there's 10 top tips um, in there with your Tim Holtz platform. So the first thing we do is we take our grid that we've made and we pop this into the corners like this. And I'm just going to stick my magnets down for a second while we look at the stamps. So as I said, there's a new confetti one or sprinkles, I think it is available. But for now, I have the flower turnabout, which is this one. I have sunrise, which is stunning as well. The dotty that we used before and oh hello that you've also seen me use before. Now, the ones you see me use will have this cross on and I'll show you how to get to those. So the turnabout stamp, the idea is you can stamp them once, twice, three times or four times. I'm going to, first of all, remove my plastic backing and then what I want to do is I just want to pull off the turnabout stamp. So some of them have sentiments and other elements in here as well but for now we just want to have that turnabout stamp and I find it's easier if I try to keep it on this piece of acetate that's again entirely personal preference. Now the newer uh, ones, I still have some of the originals but all the newer ones have this piece here on the back what you want to do first of all is grab your stamp and you want to kind of put your head over it as much as you can. So my hair, there we go. And we're lining up the stamp to these images here. So I get a little bit of this rose and these three here. And this is where we now add our turnabout image to them. So you're actually drawing on the stamp and I would recommend doing it with a Sharpie. And you want to overdraw, and I'll show you the exact lines in a second. I'm just going to draw mine on. And you want to draw these crosses on, the, the same as the packaging. So I have drawn on my crosses, and they happen to match up precisely with this. So you overlay onto here, and you can see that I've now just drawn over that cross that's in the centre of this image there. And that's how you line up your turnabout stamp. So we can now pop that piece of cardstock to the side. 
and we can bring back in our platform and you may have guessed that we're going to line up this cross so my stamped image side is down like it normally would be and you line this up with the cross in the center and it doesn't matter which way up it goes or round it goes as long as your stamps are down and you line up the cross and we want to make sure that this cross is lined up on the stamp and then that this grid piece is in your top corner up here so these are your guides up here and I've really snugly pushed in my piece of acetate I'm now going to pick up the stamp and it's highly likely my acetate's going to come with it because my stamp is going to cling to it because it's a photopolymer which is why I made sure it was just really snugly in that top corner because it's much easier to work with that way so I can now peel off my acetate piece and pop it back snugly in that corner and I know it's exactly where I want it to be now you can stamp on a six by six piece of cardstock and just keep rotating it you then wouldn't need uh, necessarily need this grid but I think you'd still find it helpful however with this piece of um, acetate in there that I've laminated you can use any size of cardstock this is a normal card front size so this is four and a quarter by five and a half and I use a little bit of Easy Dots temporary adhesive of course everything will be linked below the video and I just put a little bit down in the center there and I'm going to stick my cardstock on like so and now we're ready to start stamping. So as I say, I picked um, some very different colors here as well. So I'm gonna start with the Wilted Violet. This, this is the original Distress Inks. And you'll see how we build these colors up. And I'll grab one more color of ink in a second as well. So we'll stamp down first of all. I'll just remove this magnet. And I haven't conditioned this stamp, so I may get some funny stamping but you will still be able to see what we're doing and what the great thing about using this acetate is is the fact that you don't have to use a six by six piece of cardstock and then snip it down you can use a die cut or you can use anything of any particular size so that's stamp number one and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this piece of acetate and I'm going to turn it clockwise in the direction of my arrows just one turn and again, I'm going to pop this back down. I'm going to clean off my stamp. Now you could leave that if you just wanted a very sparse background or maybe you wanted to put a sentiment on it. You could just leave that there. You can then, if you want to, you can add a second colour or you may want to go back in with your first colour. So this is ripe persimmon, I think it's called. And I'm going to stamp this down and lift it up. And again, we clean off our stamp and you can still, you can leave it like this or we can do another stamp. So let's turn it again, one turn, pop our magnet back in again and we'll add this on. Stamp it down. I'm just gonna move my magnet out the way because it was in the way so that's your three times over and I know that they're not maybe the best colors that we put together but I want to show you how it builds up and the difference you get each time so you can see it's complementary of each time it's a completely unique stamp only Concord and Ninth sell them I'll link them all up below the video for you as well and I'm just going to grab one other color of ink so that we can add in that nice and bright Hopefully that didn't cut you out. My phone, of course, rang as it always does, just when you don't want it to. And this is our final turn. So there we are. So you can see now we have all four different colors. So we have our purple, our green, our orange, and our pink. And you could do them in more complementary colours. I mean, subtle colours look great. And then one turn in a really vivid pink and the rest in some nice pastel pinks. That looks really pretty too. You could do it in different shades. You can add textures. There's so many different things you can do. But they're a really unique stamp. As I say, there's lots of different ones you can choose from. The polka dots are really fun. I'll add that link of what I did with the hellos. That was really great fun as well. And these are great. This is a sunburst. So you can either put the sunburst in the centre 
Or if, for instance, you have a smaller piece of cardstock like we were using, you could put this over to one side and have it a little bit asymmetrical like your sun rays. So I hope you found those tips useful. As I say, do check out the links below the video. Hopefully on your screen right now, there'll be a little hedgehog button. If you click that, you can subscribe to our channel or hit the subscribe button below the video. Do give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and found some of these tips useful. And we hope to see you again soon. Do check the Hedgehog Hollow channel for tomorrow and we will have another idea using the Zen Ocean stamp from Honeybee Stamps. So thank you for joining me this morning and I will see you again next week. Happy stamping. Bye.